outside the coffee bean in Hessel. We're going to meet one of our old friends, Gary Pearce, ex Welsh international, ex rugby league Hull FC player, and ex Welsh rugby league international also. Ah, and we've got something in common actually. We've both played hooker. He's played hooker for rugby league, and I've played hooker for uh, for Hull Rugby Union. Well, there's nothing else in common whatsoever. <laughs> Let's go inside and have a chat. Come on. Come on. Welcome to the Coffee Bean. We're inside now. I'm joined by uh, Ian Castlin and also the international rugby union player, Gary Pierce. Hey, Welcome, Gary. How Thank are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Thanks really for good. the cup of tea. Uh, yes. it's good. good of you. Very good of you. So, just sat in here. It's a little bit warmer. We're not allowed to mention how warm it is in here, Ian. So, I don't know what you're going to be doing today. You've got no microphone to hold, but I mean, I'm sure you're going to join into the conversation with, with Gary. But Gary, um, we're talking about internationals a bit later on, and we'll have a rugby union roundup. But uh, you know, you've played for Wales yourself uh, internationally. Um, for us heathens who have not um, graced the international scene, uh, just just explain to us. And certainly, playing for Wales, sh singing the national anthem, you know, it's very passionate. I was there when they played against Australia. Just just enlighten us to you know what it's like to play. International rugby. Well, to say it's an emotional is a, a bit of an understatement, I, I would say. But uh, I think it's not just the playing part. You forget about the playing part. It happens so fast. It's the build-up. It's not just the day. It's the week. When I first got capped, I was lucky to get capped in Cardiff, my first camp. So my whole village in the week, the mayor, the local people, everybody in the village goes to the game. Everybody, you know, it's it's the whole build-up to that, to the game. And the game really, you just, you, you don't remember a lot of what, uh, you know, what has happened on the day because it's, it goes up so fast. You know, it's emotional, obviously I can say, singing the National Anthem, I was emotional. I don't know why, but, uh, you know, because I, I was regarded to be quite the sort of Iceman of, you know, because I always must focus on playing, but the day just, I think I lost the first half. I don't even know what I did. Yeah. Uh, the second half, then I got myself together a little bit, and I could, you know, because my job was to run the game. Uh, but yeah, certainly very emotional. I mean, we all know certainly in Wales they put so much emphasis on playing ten. Number ten is the position that everybody in Wales looks to. They look for the number ten to be the saviour, to be orchestrator, to be everything yeah. in it. So, do you feel, in addition to having your first international cup playing for Wales? There was the expectations of all the Welsh people. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, there is, as you rightly say, there's so much pressure on that because everybody, you know, I think only the number 10 never plays the game. They forget if there's another 14 of them at times and they expect the number 10 to be able to win. And if you lose equally, so you get all the, the criticism with that. But no, there is, you know, when you follow people like Barry John and Phil Bennett who grace themselves all around the world with the Lions and everybody else. The you know, the Max Boyce didn't do us any favours either with his, you know, number <laughs> ten uh, songs and you know, where they got the factory in South Wales and all that. So yeah, there's heaps of pressure. And Wales, you know, predominantly number tens come from West Wales because that's where backs come from traditionally. Uh, so yeah, you no you don't feel that. I think it's just paper talk and you're just trying to get on with just playing. Uh, but yeah, it is an expectation by everybody and they expect you to be the best player. So, moving on from uh, playing Welsh international rugby, you then got signed up in the amateur days, you played amateur uh, rugby before um, rugby union became professional, and then you moved across, came to Hull, played for Hull FC, became a professional rugby player. Now, was the professionalism at Hull um, as, as, as strong as it was at, uh, in Wales, whilst it was amateur, it was pretty much professional anyway in Wales, wasn't it? All bit yeah, we, we were pretty, uh, one of the reasons we looked, and I, I was part of uh, probably a dozen international players at that time that came over a very short period, came came north, the likes of Jonathan Davis, De John Devereux, Moriarty, Stuart Evans, you know, the list goes on of players that came. Um, for me, it was the demands more than uh, anything else in Wales. It, you know, Wales, we were on the verge of wanting to be professionalism. Although we were, you know, you got jobs and you were semi-professional in a sense, but the demands were getting greater and you ta on your time and your, you know, at the end of the day, we still had to do a, a job, and we still had, you know, had family, and it was, a, you know, it was a very difficult time to fit everything else. You know, they want you in Cardiff every weekend for tests, fitness tests, and that for me didn't go down well and I know a lot of players of that era 
were getting a bit fed up of it because you know you had no time to be with your family and yet you weren't having the rewards mm. to to do that whereas rugby league came in at the right time looking for players and offering us good contracts and it was something i felt i couldn't turn down uh for my family uh it was you know it's a big it's a big thing to leave you know all your family and you know we come from local villages where families a big part of our lives and you know we you know to sort of up your sticks and move to the north of England uh, away from everybody and you know it's, it's six hours for me to get home. Yeah picking up on that how did you find the transition from rugby union in, into rugby league? Yeah quite difficult I think as a, as a number 10 in Wales I wasn't really allowed to make tackles you know because if you were on the floor they, you know in those days you could ruck so you got more than your fair share of uh, stamping on and booting out the other end so it, coming to rugby league where you know as a as a a part of a six um, defensive team you had to be a, in a defensive line and that was quite different uh, so that was quite a learning curve for me but i enjoyed it uh, if i'm honest uh, i won't say it was it wasn't quite as, as professional as in Wales, I think, because we were all the realms of, you know, in rugby union, you tend to have everything and you have the best of everything. Whereas rugby league, I would say, was still probably a bit more grassroots across the board, although it was professional, you got paid to play. Maybe the infrastructures, unless you were at maybe the Wiggins or the St. Helens, who are probably at a different level to everybody else. Um, but Coming to Hull was probably one of the best moves I made because I, I loved the boulevard, the crowd, the atmosphere it was like being in South Wales because the, you know, the, the crowd were on the pitch side so you heard everything, you know, they were good and bad at times uh, but they're pretty honest people and, uh, and so is Wales, you, you know, there's no, there's no hiding place but um, yeah, facility wise and you know, the, the, just the pitch, you know, the pitch at the boulevard was a fantastic place to play your rugby because uh, the crowd were so passionate about it, which was very much like Wales, which really drew us in, I think, or drew me in anyway. So, <clears throat> just, I mean, we were, we were at Scarborough at the weekend, we and uh, at Silverroyd. Uh, absolutely fantastic facility there. Uh, and in terms of, they want for nothing, but again, it, it depends where they want to be in the leagues. And it's, it's always a, a very difficult thing to sort of um, to try and work out, you know, do they want to be a good local amateur side, or do they want to be professional? But the in-between bit, like the Ionians, that sort of position, it's so difficult because they don't have the money, uh, they've got the infrastructure, but, you know, with, with Scarborough, they've got everything there. Yeah, they, they said it's a fantastic facility, and i got to say, there's a lot more clubs having great facilities. I mean, if you've been to Ilkley uh, at the moment, it's, it's just fantastic. Harrogate just got a new ground. You know, I think their strength is that they're out of the way and they are in the country, so they get these... You know the, these venues. You know they're, they're, a lot of these clubs have been in the centre of the town. Now they're moving just outside, like Scarborough, and they've built a fantastic facility. But again, their strength is they've got a great facility. But maybe the position being on the seaside isn't so attractive. Uh, so it limits the the quality of play that comes through, and you know you need quality of players to go up the leagues, don't you? Yeah. Uh, and you know it's the same as Ionians find out is, you know they've got a great infrastructure, but. You know, get in, attracting the players to come to Hull, which we class as the end of the motorway. Yeah. You know, if everybody's got to travel an hour to get there, where if you're in Leeds, for instance, you've got a selection of many clubs you could play for. If you're in the Midlands, you've got a selection of clubs you could play for. So it's it's maybe the north is the northeast where we are. It's it's very hard to get the quality, you yeah. know. And um, but yeah, I mean, this doesn't stop you having good facilities, but. But also sometimes you're better where you are, yeah. you know, I mean, there's a lot of fun to be had and a lot of enjoyment to be in in the top half of the, of the table rather than fighting your way at the bottom yeah. every year just by the sake of going up the league if you can't sustain it. So talking about quality, we're going to go to the Scarborough Rugby Club. We were there on Saturday. Let's just have a quick look at what there is and after, after the break we'll be talking to you about the roundup of rugby over the weekend. Hello and welcome to Scarborough Rugby Club. In the morning, it's absolutely freezing out here. I'm joined by Stacey France. Stacey, how do you do? I'm good, are you? Yeah, I'm very good. So we're looking at Scarborough's facilities here. Absolutely spanking, aren't they, Ian? Oh, brilliant. Uh, really, really breathtaking. Nine years, nine years, this was uh, the first brick was built and they've got this fantastic studio inside. I'm going to talk to Stacey now about the facilities that are in there. So just talk to me about the facilities and what are in there. 
so there's all different obviously facilities there's the weight room which has got um olympic bars which are good for obviously your strength and conditioning you've got your seated weights you've got your dumbbells you've got a mix of stuff downstairs and then upstairs you've got the cardio room with a variety of machines you've got your um running machine stepper power bikes, what bikes, so there's a real mix of different stuff, along with obviously different classes as well. Excellent, I mean, I understand you've got 1,200 members, I'm looking here now, you've got 20 staff, you've got five pers uh, personal trainers, yeah. it's exactly what a rugby club needs, isn't it? Is it Definitely. just all around the rugby club, or is there a lot of people from the area that come and use this facility, because it is, it's absolutely There's a real, There's a real fantastic. mix, there's um, like a strength and conditioning programme for the rugby players, mm -hmm. and I think there's six players who are actually playing on the first team today, who have actually been doing that programme. Um, you've got people all kind of walks of life. You've got the younger generation, you've got the older generation. So there's a real good mix in there. I've just been in there. There's a lot of people that you talk about different ages. There's young kids in the squash courts mm. and then there's older people doing the dance routines. It is, it's all embracing. It's not from very young people to older people. Talking about you know the future plans, you're going to have a couple more squash courts built. Yep. You're going to have a cafe area, yep. so it's going to be a huge complex and um, a new studio as well, which would be good. Yeah. So yeah, good. there is. It's it's going forward all the time. Good. I understand, Tish, you were one of the first members here. Is that yes, correct? Yes, I was. Yes, definitely. Been here nine years now, and yep. it has come on so much from obviously what it originally was. So and it's going to obviously be bigger and better, which is positive. So we understand you've got a class now, so we're going to let you go. But yes. But thanks very much to Stacey, and uh, we'll see you after the break. Thank you. Welcome back to the Coffee Bean. We're going to talk about uh, the weekend's uh, local roundup uh, of matches. Before that, we're going to talk about the internationals that happened in the weekend as well. And uh, I'd like to your take on the on the matches that played at the weekend in internationals, Gary. Should we talk about Wales first? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did well. Wales. Yeah, they did well. I don't know. They keep saying it's a transitional period for Wales, but yeah, obviously we got we got beaten, I suppose. We, we, we've got a lot of change of players, we've got a few injuries out at the minute and obviously there's a new breed of players coming in, they're trying to experiment with this 10 and 12 channel, playing two playmakers. I think we went well, you know, at the end of the day we're playing New Zealand and, you know, probably New Zealand are the same at the moment. I think they're using this sort of blood a lot of players because they've got a lot of injuries themselves. Um, yeah, where we are, it really, I don't know. Or maybe the Six Nations will give us a better picture on that. But yeah, we, we had a lot of fire, a lot of passion yesterday. But we defended well. But you know, it doesn't. You can't defend forever. You'd expect England to win 48 points to uh, 14 against Tonga, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think. Uh, again, I, I don't really. Th I watched all England games and I watched the Welsh games. The only side I think, Scot you know, Scotland have played well above themselves. 53-24 yeah. uh, against Australia. Oh, Incredible, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Bringing it back now to the local levels, then Ionians against Old Athenians, is it? Old Athenians. So yeah. 27 points to 11. So home, you'd expect to win against mid-table people. You have to win mid-table, don't well, you? Well, I think I think Old Athenians came up last year. I think yeah, it's a game I would have targeted. I would have thought uh, they they needed because they got a pretty tough run coming the next three or four games. You know, all sides were in the top three or four sides, and I can't see them getting a lot of points from them. You know, they'll target trying to get a point here and there, but I think they would have targeted these last three games, and I think they've done pretty well. They've, they've got points out of it. Their deputant, Matt, Matt, Matt Clark, the, well, he's a centre at Donny, Don, yeah, Doncaster. Yeah, I think uh, Matt's just come back from injury at Donny. Uh, I know Matt quite well. Um, yeah, he's had a, a bit of a, a, a reconstruction with his knee, and uh, obviously I think uh, they didn't want him to play this week at, uh, at, uh, on a 3G pitch. 
So it was it was quite handy for them to loan him out to Ice for to get a you know but you know he'll play next week for Doncaster against Bristol, pretty sure. But yeah, he scored three tries. He's one of the best centres in the championship. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you'd expect him to. Uh, so I think Ayers are very fortunate it's to have him this week. Yeah. Yeah. So just looking at Ayers' next few games, we talked about it. They've got a very tough running, haven't they? <sighs> yeah. I mean. Uh, Plymouth away this week, yeah, you know, that's this week, way. that's a long way to go and, and they're doing pretty well this year. You know, the week after, my mate Paul Turner coaches Amtil and they're going pretty well at the minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think then they got before Christmas, Mountain Park as well, who were, what, second in the league. So, you know, they've they've got some tough games up with the lead up to Christmas, but yeah. I suppose you just got to try to get a point or two out of them and move on, you know, but yeah. It's, it's a tough, tough room. It's a tough. It's a tough league. Yeah, it's a tough league, national one. I, I look at it. There's, there's two leagues within that league, and you're seeing that now. The top yeah. four or five sides with, with with the money to to go the distance. Yeah, it's the long knees. It's the long knees again. You know, it's what you can pull in. The Midland sides have, you know, the the expansion of the long knees because of uh, wasps moving to the Midlands has flooded the market place in the Midlands. There's a lot more availability to them sort of clubs. So, you know, at the north here, with they, you know. I struggle because you can only pull from don't, you know championship players where they're pulling from Premiership players who have mm -hmm. huge amount of uh, more availability than than the championships you know because the championships have small squads. Moving on to the North One, Hope the side you're, you're in, t in charge of yeah. at the helm. Yeah. So what you know it's 50 points to three. I mean, what on earth are you letting them in for three points? What's going on there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't happy first half. <laughs> yeah, I've never been. When have you ever been up? I've never yeah. been a working head, and it was like oh, every time I go there, the pitches are waterlogged, or it's snowing, or it's. I've been here four times, and every time, it, the last twice, and this this was no no exception. The pitch was waterlogged, and we had a free flow inside. Uh, but yeah, we, it was a good result for us. We played well the second half, really well. Uh, for a, you know, again, we're, we're a young side, and uh, we're, we're improving. Yeah, no, we, we, we're moving up, you know, we're nearly second now, we're two points behind Lim. They got a difficult game this week against Harrogate, we're at home to Kendall, so hopefully after this weekend, who knows, we could be joint second, you know, so, yeah, but we, we're in a good vein of, uh, vein of form at the moment, um, so we're just going to keep that going. We've got a good squad, a good young squad and local squad, so yeah, we're, we're pretty happy where we are really. Mm. Cassie was talking, you were talking about their wingers, Ian, the, how quick the wingers are scored three on Saturday. Yeah, very much. The extra believe boys, I understand. Uh, yeah, well, Mike Adlad is. Um, Mike's just gone to the sevens this week, actually. He's, he's been uh, asked to play for a sevens team in Dubai, so he's, as you'll know well, Cass, yeah, he's beautiful. on his way to Dubai um, <laughs> this week, so he'll be missing this week. But we got Callum Lancaster, who's had a bit of a knee problem. He's back this week, so yeah, we've... Yeah, we've been very lucky. We've picked up some LFC rugby league boys who have been surplus to recovering for LFC, but you know their skill factor and their speed is exceptional. And young, uh, young. and yeah, yeah. twenty-year-olds again, yeah. which is and, and they and Hull boys, mm. which is great. And uh, I think they've come to uh, into rugby union and really enjoyed the experience at the minute. And you know, I think you know it's pretty hard when you've set your goal playing for LFC and you quite haven't made the grade. So I think they found it coming out of rugby league into something else. It's given a bit more um, enthusiasm to learn a new game and, and get involved in a different environment. And I think that's been good for them. And we've, we've benefited from that. But we also got Steve Aheater, who's on the other wing, who is a. He scored three Saturdays. He scored, yeah, four Saturdays. Or oh, four, was it? Four, oh, yeah, he scored four. Possibly could have had six, if I'm honest. He's just a good player, a big, big lad who's moved up here. Yeah, we, we got him on loan from Doncaster a couple of years back. And he came to Holland, enjoyed the experience, and enjoyed played with a few of the lads and got on really well with them uh, and he's settled up here now he's got a job up here he's and he's a good player he's a handful at, at, at our level he's a, he could play higher I'm pretty sure but you know a lot of everybody wants it he's had a go at it got a bit disappointed with it and he's just finding his confidence back now I think so you're currently you're currently third from top yes. the other end of the table poor old uh, poor old Pocklington third from bottom they lost to bottom of the table yeah. It's, it's Morley sat there. What yeah. is going on there? Do you think? Well, it, it's hard for them, Tez. You know, it's a it's a squad. You know, you, you know, you have a few injuries, and you know, you come up a level, and you, you know, it's all about. We talk about Scarborough about being at the level, and yeah. you know, Pock probably are, are 
have done better than they thought. You know, coming up last year was great, but it's such a big step up. Yeah, it is. It's you know, huge. And, and the leagues are getting more competitive. You know, you look at the sides in our league. You know, you got Preston, Grasshoppers, Harrogate. You know, you think of ourselves who've been here, but you know, there's a lot of good sides played at this level. And if you, you know, the sides who come up, they have a very small squad and they get a few injuries, and it's hard to compete. That they're a young squad as well, Pocklington. A lot of homegrown players yeah, in there as well. I mean, it's a great, it's a great, great yeah. club, and you know, it, it's one of them. You come up, I probably, I would say that you come up, enjoy the experience, try your best, and whatever happens, if they go back down, they've had a, you know, they've done really well last year, and that's the downside of doing really, really well in a, in a, a village team. You know, you can't attract the players to keep that you know, momentum going. You know. Just looking down uh, the leagues a little bit more, we've got Yorkshire 1, Hellenians had a huge loss on Saturday. What's going on there? I mean, obviously Jules has left the country, gone to live abroad, which has left a little bit of a void at Hellenians. And, you know, it's, it's always difficult at the transition player where you're trying to establish a style of play. D Darren Booth's at the helm there. Yeah, well, it, it's been hard for him because Julian was such a big character and, and been so influential over the last number of years. Um, I thought they did really well. I mean, he's been gone a few weeks now, but uh, I thought they sort of managed that well and, and were doing okay. Obviously, they got they got well beaten on Saturday, which probably shocked a few people because they've been doing well. But uh, yeah, 54 nil doesn't go board well. But again, could be injuries, could be lack of availabilities. You know, uh, you know, local rugby is is hard. You know, because they get lads getting time off work for you know these days, it's, it's become harder for them. And it's, it purely comes down to availability of players at, at times. Injuries. So, you know, injuries are unavailable. Yeah. It can knock you four or five yeah. in the players you bring in. Yeah. It's such a big gulf. You know, the second team rugby playing in a local is really, you know, it's a really sort of poor quality. Um, so, you know, it's a big step up for young players to come in and go to Motown, who, you know, we, we know that they've been recruited a little bit uh, and are on their way up. So, yeah, it was. It was a big, a big shock, but that Yorkshire one is a great league. I mean, it, you know, to be fair, you wouldn't mind being involved in that because that's where we were probably like, you know, you're looking at five local sides, a yeah. lot of derby games, a yeah, lot of interest. There on Saturday yeah. when, when we was, you know, with Scarborough and Beverly. I mean, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be uh, covering the Hellenians versus Keithley game uh, next Saturday, aren't we? And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Hellenians recover from such a huge loss. Well, there's five week. local sides there, and it was yeah. Salvi as well. You yeah, them course, in. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I know they're not doing too well this year, but, you know, again, it, it's a lot of local interest, and, you know, you, you wouldn't mind having five derbies a year, would you? Yeah, Locally, yeah. it would be great. You know, if we were in there and, and Driffield were in there, God, it'd be a great league, wouldn't it? You know, you, number one, you wouldn't have to travel too far. And number two, you get great crowds. Because the interest is there locally, man. You know, it really is. And, and Pock as well, you know. you. You know. So Scunthorpe had a, had a win um, at the weekend as well, obviously across the water. They're not a bad side, they're the equivalent to, to what you are up north, yeah. aren't they? And it, that's the difficulty is that, you know, they're, they're playing in the Midlands and, you know, you're playing in the north. But I think the north divisions are a lot stronger than the yeah. uh, Midlands. I think they? we've always thought that, there's really, I think you always find that, you know, you get two players in the Midlands, two teams in the Midlands that are okay. The rest, there is a massive difference between the middle and the top. Yeah, you know, you're looking at their sides are uh, getting absolutely hammered at times. Scarborough started, uh, sorry, Scunthorpe started pretty uh, slowly, but I think they've come good the last three or four games because they lost a few. Again, they came down, and again, it's a rebuild, isn't it? When you come down, it's it's hard to rebuild because uh, they were in last two last year, yeah. um, and it was a tough league for them. Now they've gone back to the Midlands, who is slightly easier, uh, and they'll they'll find their level a bit table this year, and then try to you know, regroup themselves for next year, I would say. So just closing stage of our programme now, uh, thanks very much, Gary, for, for joining us. But from, from your perspective for Hull Rugby Union Football Club, for this particular year, I know you, you hadn't set your sights on getting promoted. You find yourself in third position. You've got to play the top two again. The top two have to play each other this Saturday. So potentially, are you looking at a promotion? I think we just go where we, you know, we'll take what comes. Uh, our, for us, promotion, you know, finishing in the top four in this league is quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's an enjoyable experience for the people, the club, the people who come to work, play good rugby. You know, you can go, you know, you can wish to go to the next level. The next level, you know, you're coming against Sale, you know, you know, the ex quality have gone up, obviously, but the Hinkleys, you know, a lot of these middle of who get a lot of these low knees like we talked about. 
you don't want to be stuck at the bottom. Well, you know, it becomes hard work. I think if we're good enough to go up, we'll go up, and if we're not, we won't. And we've got no real drive to go up. You know, we, we want the lads to win. We try to win every game, and if he takes us there, we will do. But we think we've got a good young side where we've got seven or eight players who are in the, you know, a 19 and 20 years of age playing it week in, week out. And, you know, you know for and a lot of these, five of them are in the forwards. You know, and it's a learning period. You know, period, and you could play press, and they got Paul Arnold, who's been around, done been it. Time, you know, yeah. and he's been a very, yeah. very good player, and still is a very good player. And you know, he comes against our second rows, and you know, is men and boys. So, whereas could we cope with it? I'm not. I don't know yet. But you know, we 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 got a lot of players who are local now, which is great for us. We're getting a we got you know a lot of team. You know, we're able to have a lot of team socials, and it's very enjoyable. And I think we, you know, we win pretty much 90% of our home games, and we're the same on the road. So we're not, you know, it's enjoyable, and I think the lads enjoy it, and everybody else enjoys with it. So, yeah, but we'll see how we go. Hey, I'm not saying we won't take promotion, but if it happens, it happens. But if it doesn't, we'll hopefully finish next year in the th you know fourth or third again, you know, and Good. try to work. So that's Gary Pierce, everybody, and just moving on to the. Um, following week, which is going to be uh, Hellensians versus Keithley. Tune in next Saturday for Hellensians versus Keithley, and thanks very much to Gary Pierce and my co presenter. Thanks, guys. See you on Saturday.